Hi everyone and welcome back to another Mixed Media Tuesday where I create a Mixed Media project. After a long break I'm back and today I'm sharing a canvas, Mixed Media canvas, by using products from my latest release All Allow with Stamperia. So I started with this mold, it's one of the two molds from my collection and I did pour resin on the Eiffel Tower. I'm not showing you how I did that, I did share this process in previous videos but uh, you can definitely use resin or even clay if you like or even ceramic powder that you dilute with water so once you have the mold ready you need to color it depending on uh, the product that you use to create the mold you may need to prime it in my case since i used resin for uh, the, um, the actual mold, uh, it is a non porous surface, so I did prime it with white primer. You can do that with gesso as well. Now, on top of that, I'm covering it uh, completely with uh, black acrylic paint. This is a paint by Stamperia and it dries completely matte. It works beautifully for the technique that I'm going to do later on. So just make sure that you cover it up completely, leave it to dry, and if uh, you feel like you need to add a second layer if you have missed a couple of spots or if you can see that white coming through. Now as I always say I do have a general idea of what I'm doing with every project but most of the times the finished project is completely different so here I did use the mold again to add uh, this foliage and I was thinking that I will use that to decorate my Eiffel Tower. At the end you will see that I'm not going to use them at all however I will show you how I colored them because they are just stunning. So anyway I applied first my uh, primer or the white gesso whatever you have and then on top I'm again covering them completely with the black acrylic paint. And now while I have the black out and my brush is uh, dirty with black acrylic paint I'm going to do a little preparation on my canvas. You see I'm using this Arteza one and it is 8 by 8 in size. On top of my canvas I will use as a background a pattern paper however I'm going to have a frame all around so that's what I'm doing here I'm covering up the canvas with black and uh, this way I will have a black frame uh, on my project so I'm just going to do that now and I think that I added way too much paint that uh, other than I actually need and to tell you the truth, you don't really need to cover up the whole canvas. After all, at the center, I'm going to cover it up with other elements. Don't forget to do the edges as well at this stage and leave it to dry. So for my background, I'm going to pick one of the background papers from my latest collection. This is the 8x8 pad. And as I browse through, you get a chance to see all the different designs. If you haven't seen my introduction, you can find the video here on YouTube. So for my project today, I'm going to pick this uh, beautiful pattern paper, one of my favorites definitely for backgrounds. And if you ask me, I have two big uh, favorites for backgrounds, newspapers and maps for some reason don't ask me why so anyway this is going to be my background i'm going to cut it to be slightly smaller remember my canvas is eight by eight but i want to leave a little bit of that black border that i already prepared so i cut it out to be slightly smaller now i'm going to do my brayering technique and uh, this is a level technique if you want to somehow knock uh, the design bag without covering it up completely so what i'm doing here is i'm using ivory acrylic paint and i'm going over the design i'm not trying to cover it up I'm just making sure that it's not so much up into your face more like a background than a focal point instead of a brayer another way to go for something similar is to use a brush I'm going to show you what I mean just add a little bit of that same acrylic paint and then with your brush create brush strokes completely randomly on your background. If you love looking at those brush strokes, I think it adds a beautiful texture, especially if yeah, the color of your pattern paper is uh, a little bit darker, so it adds more contrast into the effect. Also, to get beautiful brush strokes, just make sure that your brush is completely dry, otherwise it's going to blend the color into your paper and you will not get those brush strokes that I'm talking about. 
I'm going to make sure that this layer of acrylic paint is completely dry and don't overdo it with paint or uh, water on top of a pattern paper. Remember this is not meant to take too many uh, wet mediums, this is just pattern paper. However, it does take a little bit uh, of paint as you can see. Now I'm going with my uh, pink color just to add some color variation at the background, again doing the brush stroke technique my brush is completely dry, no water there. And now let's spice it up a little bit by adding a more vibrant color. This is raspberry. All the colors that I'm using are from my uh, hand-picked colors that match, acrylic colors that match with my collection. There is a selection of six colors that are perfect for uh, all the colors that you find in uh, Olala. So for uh, raspberry, I just I dilute it with water and I'm adding some splatters all over the background. Again, I'm going to use my heat gun to make sure that all this uh, wet paint is completely dry before I move on to the next steps. Now I'm going to do some uh, stamping to add some visual texture on my background as well as a little bit of ink blending. I'm going for kind of a vintage look and feel for my project today. I don't want to overdo it, however. So I'm inking up the edges with coffee dye ink and um, this is the stage where you can uh, go ahead and play with your stencils if you like, with your um, uh, modeling paste, and um, you can even add some sprays on top. But never forget, this is just scrapbook paper, so do, you don't want to overdo it, otherwise it's going to be warped and uh, really wavy at the end. So here I'm roughing up the edges just by using uh, my scissors. This is going to add some extra texture on my paper when I stick it down on my canvas. And now it's time to do some stamping. I'm going to bring in one of the two stamp sets from my latest collection. This is the one that has uh, many uh, sweets as well as um, a lot of uh, labels, which I find really great for backgrounds. I'm going to use a couple of them for this background and I'm going to stamp with uh, black shadow. I am going with black ink for this stamping since it is going to add that uh, black uh, detail on my background because I will have a black border as well as uh, the black base of my Eiffel Tower. So I want to kind of bring everything together. If you want to have a more subtle background, definitely use another color of ink, which is going to give a more soft look. Notice that I combine more than one stamps from these labels and I'm also going to add a little bit of uh, text as well. I mainly go into clusters if you notice. I don't just randomly stamp here and there. Uh, I kind of nest them together. All the stamping is um, touching each other. Now also from roughing up the edges of this paper with my scissors, I ended up having some white uh, edges, which I don't like. That's why I'm going to get rid of them by using my finger dabber and the same blacking all around. And now it's time to put together the whole composition. So I'm sticking down my paper on top of the black canvas that we prepared earlier. You see, I'm being very lazy here and I'm just using my hot glue gun to stick the paper down. But you can definitely use any type of glue you feel it's going to hold. And now this is where you can start playing and auditioning all the elements that you have. You can play with ephemeras, you can play with your uh, molds, and here you can see my thinking process uh, where I was thinking that I want to use the foliage of the mold. However, I'm not going to use it after all because I couldn't balance my Eiffel Tower somehow. Anyway, I'm going to show you, however, how I colored everything by using Stardust by Stamperia, which is an amazing product that you combine with uh, wax. So uh, the Stardust, as you can see here, is uh, just like pigment that has shine in it. And then in order to make it stick on your project, you need to use a little bit of uh, wax that uh, I am uh, applying with my finger. If you don't like using your fingers, you can definitely use brushes. However, I have more control of exactly what I'm doing with my fingers. I can feel all the mountains of the design. And uh, this way I can better apply the stardust on top of it. I'm combining two different colors on top of my project. As you can see, I'm going with gold and copper. 
This is a process that I absolutely love. It's a very satisfying technique. Once you apply the stardust on top of your black elements, they come to life and they always look just stunning. At the bottom of the Eiffel Tower, there are some leaves, so I am going to touch it up a little bit with green. And you can see that you can easily layer stardust one on top of the other. It gives a beautiful effect. If you leave it, it's going to dry and it doesn't move at all at the end. Now, I am not going to use the foliage, the flowers and the leaves that I'm playing with right now. However, I'm going to show you how they look because <laughs> I find that uh, this stardust is just magical and I absolutely love how it brings everything to life. You see here I am combining the green with copper, again a beautiful color combination for the elements. Of course, although I'm not going to use them in this project, I am keeping them in a box with the rest of my resins for a future project definitely. Now, in Olala you will find many different products to play with. So these two postcards are cutouts from the 12 by 12 paper pad. These are little cutouts that are from this collectibles paper pad. And there are also ephemeras that you can use or chipboard pieces. A really lot of options depending on what you want to do. For this project I'm also going to bring in the decorative chips and I will use the word Paris from here. And from the ephemera packs, I have a bunch of flowers on my side so that I can pick and mix depending on the needs that I have for this project. You can definitely fuzzy cut the flowers from the paper pads or from the collectibles. So it's time to put everything together now. For all my cutout elements as well as the ephemeras, I usually go around the edges and ink them up either with black ink depending on the project or with uh, coffee ink. In this case I'm going with coffee so that it's not that vibrant. The um, inking of the edges is going to help all the elements to pop against each other when you stick them one on top of the other to create your clusters and at the same time it is going to disguise any mistakes that you did while uh, fuzzy cutting. So here for one of the tags that I cut out from the collectibles, I just created a little uh, hole at the top with my crocodile and I'm threading some string. It's always nice to add extra textures on a project because it uh, adds more interest. And I'm going to start creating my clusters. I will glue the one postcard on top of the other, making sure that I can see the beautiful color coming through from the back. And then I'm going to grab in my rabbons. And uh, this is one of my favorite rabbons of all times. I absolutely love the combination of uh, uh, text with flowers. And uh, look at that beautiful blue flower. I'm going to use that and on top of my postcard, which is going to give some interest on top of it and um, for uh, transferring the image I always like to use one of my bold tools I find it is the best tool but you can definitely use the back of your brush a back of a marker whatever you feel like and uh, one tip that I always say is always uh, use your scissors to cut out the image that you want to use don't peel off the whole ribbon and try to transfer what you want trust me it's going to stick all over the place and don't ask me how I know. And I'm going through the rest of the ribbons from the same collection, trying to pick what would match nicely with what I'm going for. So this is the one that has more of a travel theme with all the suitcases and the tickets. And then this is another one that has more of a Paris vibe to it, with the macarons, the Eiffel Tower, etc. Again, I'm using my scissors to uh, cut out all the images that I want to play with. And here you can see I went with one of the post stamps. I think it is the perfect uh, ribbon for this uh, postcard. Uh, on top of it, I am going to transfer this one. And then again, I'm going to use my scissors and cut out some of the other elements. I like this because uh, although I can recreate it by using my stamps, this is ready to go already with a couple of colors. So I don't have to grab my stamps for that. And now finally it's time to glue everything together to create my composition, so I'm going to put on some music and let you see the whole process.
Okay, so I'm back. Most of my composition is ready. Now I want to add my uh, sentiment that I always like to add, a quote or something. And for that I'm going with the word Paris from the decorative chips. This is a very intricate design, so you need to be super careful as you separate it. And uh, for that I uh, used my craft knife as a help. So look how gorgeous this is, however the color of it doesn't contrast with what I have underneath, that's why I'm just going to color it, use your brush and acrylic paint, you can just spray it. I am going with my alcohol markers, again just because I'm lazy I'm going over it with my uh, marker and I'm just going to color it in super quickly, super easy and then just stick it on top of my project. I added tons of dots of glue at the back, for that I went with my matte glue which is going to make sure that it's going to disappear completely even if I made a mess out of it, it's not going to show or look uh, shiny at all. So my Paris word is ready on top of my project and now let's complete the quote by adding an extra sentiment. There are tones that you can choose from the pattern paper, either the 12x12, 12 12, the 8x8 or even the collectibles. However, I just went with my label maker because I wanted to bring a little bit more black into my project. For my label maker I managed to find a ref fill that prints white letters on top of a black background and I use it a lot for my projects. So I'm turning this into being super thin and I'm going to nest it somehow inside that beautiful curve of the word Paris. And of course this is the hardest part of the whole process, knowing when to stop. This is when I'm already in the zone of creativity. I don't want to leave my craft uh, desk, I don't want to leave the project alone, so I can keep on adding elements since I have them handy from the ephemera packs. So you will see that I'm going to uh, introduce a few more flower clusters, just tuck them behind other elements. I'm also going to bring in my reversible tweezers so that I can uh, curl up some of the corners to add some extra dimension on my project. Remember this is a um, 3D dimensional canvas that is going up on my wall. Uh, I have the freedom of adding as much dimension as I want which is something that I don't enjoy when I'm working on a journal. So when I go for a mixed media canvas I can add as much dimension as I like and I'm really having fun with it. Also remember that all of the ephemeras are self-adhesive, so all you have to do is to just peel off the packing and stick them down. But if you don't want to bother and you want to uh, move faster, you can definitely just add a dot of glue at the back and stick them down. Now, after embellishing uh, the whole composition with a few flowers and a few leaves here and there, I'm moving on to the next step, which is of course my white gel pen. I get a lot of questions about my white gel pen. The one that I'm using here is the Sakura one, and uh, I'm just adding a few highlights here and there on the cutouts, on the ephemeras, not um, uh, paying attention on where the light is coming from or anything like that, just to turn uh, the project into looking more whimsical to bring some details more into life, really sketchy lines here and there. Now this is one of my long videos but I know that you don't uh, mind a longer video so I'm going to show you all the steps. Now just because I have that uh, shine on my Eiffel Tower I wanted to somehow bring that shine on the black uh, parts of the project as well, so on the frame. That's why I'm using the same technique with my finger, the wax and uh, the stardust, just going around it, not paying attention to make it uh, to cover it up completely or make it perfect, just some um, brush strokes, let's say, or finger strokes all over the place to add that shine on the frame. This kind of binds everything together because that uh, matte frame was standing too black for me and I think it is uh, better this way. I'm also going to kind of uh, pet my Paris world very lightly on top of it to add a touch of shine there. And I did add some white splatters which I missed filming but you can see them in a close up here. So that was the project for today. I'm going to link everything I used in the description down below. I hope that you had fun and that you got inspired. If you did, don't forget to leave me a comment as well as like the video. It really helps especially with longer videos. Thank you all so much for joining me and I'll see you all next time.